Phonetics and Phonology. Today, we are going to start another aspect of phonology that is called a panthesis. See what it is. Its definition is the addition of a sound is called a panthesis. What does it mean? That we are going to add some new sounds or extra sound that does not exist in it. It has important condition. It means that you have to fulfill certain criteria. This process of a panthesis in English happens whenever a nasal sound is followed by a voiceless fricative, as long as the voiceless fricative is not part of a stressed syllable. See, it has two different parts. This condition has to follow two different parts. Number one, the sound should be a nasal sound. Number B part of it, that it should be followed by a voiceless fricative. It should not be a vowel. It should not be a plosive. It should not be an affricate or any other sound. It should always be a voiceless fricative. Second point is that is very important that that voiceless fricative should not be part of a stressed syllable. We have learned about stress pattern. So this voiceless, voiceless fricative should not exist there where the syllable is stressed. So remember, it will be the part of a unstressed syllable. Now move to the next one. It has three different situations. First one is situation one. What it is when is pronounced after n sound, four changes occur in this transition from n to s. N is a nasal sound, and you should remember that s is basically voiceless fricative. Uh, we will consider a word later. We'll see its uh, exa example. So what we are going to do here, there will be four different changes. Remember, ing sound is a voice sound, whereas s is voiceless. And you remember that both sounds are not pronounced in the same way. Both have different places of articulation. Secondly, sound is oral in the sense that the soft palate, palate is raised. Ng is nasal. What does it mean? That we are going to pronounce it with a soft palate lowered. Third is, third quality you will have that is fricative with a partial closure in the mouth and ing requires complete closure. And the fourth one is that n is velar sound, whereas s is alveolar. So these are four different places of articulation. So thus, the transition to s from n involves four changes at the vocal folds with the soft palate, with a different degree of closure, with a different part of a tongue. In careful speech, it is quite possible to synchronize all these movements, but many people in ordinary, typical, informal, colloquial speech do not. What happens in their case is that the changes at the vocal folds and with the soft palate are engaged first, and then the tongue catches up afterwards. In other words, the transition from ng 
to is staggered with the result that an extra transitional sound is produced that transitional sound has a voicelessness and orality of s, but the tongue position of the n mm, and is is thus identical to the articulation of the english consonant k so what's going to happen there will be a sound that will be produced between n mm and s and that will be k sound so see the example it's the word youngster if you see youngster transcription is written there so what you are going to do see young and stir there are two syllables young and you can find the symbol which shows that young has the is the syllable which is basically focused which will be stressed and then you have got a point and after that it's stir and stir sound stir is not focused means it will not be stressed and see what we said that ng sound nasal sound should be followed by a voiceless fricative is voiceless fricative and voiceless fricative should not be the part of a stressed syllable syllable so stir is not stressed syllable so what's going to happen youngster when you say slowly youngster but when you will speak fluently what's going to happen k sound will be produced that addition of k between ng and s is called a parenthesis so it will become youngster situation 2 when s is pronounced after m again four changes occur in this transition from m to s how it's going to happen see m is a voiced one and s is voiceless whereas m is nasal s is oral m is closed and s is fricative m is labial and s is alveolar so what's going to happen the same thing will occur that we will have different places of articulation and a new sound will be produced and that sound will be per sound so we have the example that is hamster so c ham and st ham is basically primarily or pri has primary stress so s is not the part of stressed syllable and s is coming after m mm. so m mm is a nasal sound and c is again voiceless fricative so when we'll pronounce it fluently what's going to happen that we will add another sound extra sound that is per sound so hamster when we'll say slowly ham ster it's fine but when we'll speak when we speak it fluently with fast speed per sound will be produced and it will become hamster third situation when s is pronounced after n again four changes occur in this transition from n to s let's see those four situation four changes sorry so c voiced sound nasal sound closed sound and flat sound these are the four qualities or four different places where mm, articulation is involved so is voiceless oral fricative and grooved so when they both come after means comes after m mm, it's the third nasal sound so see what happens what 
the new sound we are going to add. See the example of monster. So n is followed by s. So what's going to happen? T sound will be added. Extra sound will be t. And see, mon is basically the syllable where we are we are putting stress. But st is a syllable where we are not adding or we are we are not putting any stress. So what's going to happen? When we speak fluently, it will become monster. But when we speak it slowly, it will remain monster. But when we speak it fluently with speed, it will become monster. So that is basically a panthesis. So remember these three situations. I hope you understood it well. Thank you for watching.